Ladies and gentlemen, I don't think any of us, uh, if we come across a metaphor in the future, I don't think any of us will forget that object lesson of what makes a good metaphor and why they are so important. But we're going to move on, and we're going to move on uh, with Anthony Gell. Now, Anthony is the founder and leader of Leaders in Com. Many of you will have come across it. Uh, it's certainly succeeding. He has his own background in business conference planning and that type of area in business publishing. But he has interviewed many of the very greatest minds in the world today. And that is certainly something. His title as a speech, you've probably got a program. If you've got a program, it says his title is dot, 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 dot. Has everybody got that? <laughs> Yeah. Now we know the title is Lessons Learned. Please welcome Anthony Gill. Ladies and gentlemen, on many occasions when it comes to public speaking, I have totally and utterly screwed up. Screwed up so many times that I decided when I was told tonight the objective of my speech would be to, to, to say something slightly humorous, which I've always been challenged with, <coughs> but also something about public speaking. I thought, well, that's great. I've got so much material about the subject of screwing up that I wanted to share that with you. I've titled it Lessons Learned because potentially that's a more of a clear definition of what the speech is really about. But I'd like to share with you, if I can, my first speech I ever gave, um, standing up in front of a group of people. And that was at university. And it was on the subject of the Treaty of Versailles. I remember talking about it, and I had never been so nervous in my entire life. I, somebody told me, don't bring up too many notes. I didn't just have notes, ladies and gentlemen. I had my entire collection of lever arch files in case I got stuck on a point. <laughs> they say that you should think that the room is for you. And it's a good thing to have in the psyche of the speaker. Well, at the time, I had my ex-girlfriend in the room staring at me. We had an argument two nights before with her arms crossed, just looking at me, saying, you try to impress me. And then halfway through the speech, in the middle of the audience, just around here, the people over here started screaming and standing up. I was like, what's going on? A rat had decided to run straight through the seats here and straight down the corridor to me here. I am afraid of mice and rats, so I literally jumped on the nearest, oldest table and was standing up screaming as the rat came down and passed me. And it was then the rat did disappear. But then I was standing on a desk that was wobbling under my weight with the whole audience looking at me after I had just been basically almost in tears screaming. And that is when I realized, I said to myself, thank goodness this speech is on the Treaty of Versailles, not on courage or leadership. <laughs> because I had shown none of that. And it was then that I had my first epiphany and my first lesson. And that was that no matter what happens when you're up here, you have to try and stay calm and composed. I didn't speak for about ten years after that. <laughs> Until I went to go and see this guy called Roger Hamilton speaking at this event. And it was a business, uh, it's a business guru. And I was so impressed by this guy that I decided, I was with a friend of mine called Debbie. I was so impressed that I decided to go straight up to him afterwards and speak to him. And you know that when a great speaker speaks, after they've left the stage, there's almost like a, a deity aura around them. I was nervous. I was like, my goodness. Anyway, it's ridiculous. It's just another human being, right? So I walked up to him, and I said to him, Roger, Roger, great speech. Could you just tell me, please, what is the key, the art of success in business? To which he said, public speaking. I was like, huh, interesting. Public speaking, can you elaborate there? And he said, well, think about this for a second. He said, if I'm going to spend an hour with you now, talking to you about my business, that's an hour spent, but it's with one person. If I've got 200 people in the room, that's 
equivalent of 200 hours it would take me to, to do that. So that's 199 hours saved. And he said to me, Anthony, how many days do you think that is, 199 hours? I said, what am I, Rain Man? How do I know? <laughs> to which he, I said to him, do you know? And he said, no, I don't, but it's a lot of days. That, 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 that was his point. And then it really stuck in, I was with Debbie at the time, and Debbie was like, like she took this on board. She, never, she decided she never wanted to speak to another person one-on-one -on -one again. <laughs> but it's true, that's when I sort of had a major lesson learned, that it's really about, you know, public speaking, getting up there, it's the power of leverage, right? So that then made me decide that I want to go and do, get back and just forget the university experience and get back up there on, on, on stage. So I was running a conference in Singapore when I decided I've got to go and try and do some, you know, a small bit of public speaking at this Singapore event. Um, and I had a little script ready and it was going to take place at the M Hotel in Singapore. So I got everything ready and I decided, okay, I'm going to leave and I'm going to get a taxi. I'm not going to rely on public tra transport this time. No, I'm going to splash out and I'm going to get a taxi. So I decided, I got into a taxi and I thought that by the taxi got, uh, by the t time the taxi left and got me there, I'd be pretty much on time. Yeah, is that good? Yeah, that's okay. I got into the taxi and I said to him, hiya, how are you doing? I would like to go to the M Hotel. So, surely enough, we left. And I got out of the taxi and I was realized, why? Are we at the Hyatt Hotel? I'm not going to make my speech. The M Hotel is miles away from the Hyatt Hotel. So I got back into the taxi quickly before he left. I said, taxi, taxi driver, what have you done to me? I'm going to be late now. Why are we at the, why are we at the Hyatt Hotel? And he said, Anthony. Well, he didn't say Anthony. He didn't know my name. <laughs> Slight elaboration there. He said to me, you said, go to the Hyatt Hotel. I was like, you're totally insane. I did not. And then I realized on the way to the journey there, the first thing I did when I got into the taxi, I said, Hiya, how are you doing? So he went, Hiya, and he went off the <laughs> but, but the key lesson there was even if you think you're leaving early enough to get to the venue, you have to leave even earlier, because you never know what's going to happen. But ladies and gentlemen, my, my key point for tonight was just simply that, yeah, there's going to be screw-ups as you go along the journey. There's going to be lessons learned, as we call the speech. But that it's because you're out there doing it. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, getting out there and doing it and being on that learning curve, there is no better else to be. Thank you very much indeed.